Okay, so this is the experiment on specific heat capacity, and I'm going to take a few measurement examples. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to have the hot metals in the pot in boiling water, and I'm going to use ice cold water. And I didn't mean to get the ice. There. I have marked the um, cups to 100 milliliters. Usually I would use 50 milliliters, but the samples that I'm using are have a lot of mass, so I'm using more water than usual. And then I'm going to measure temperature on these just before I put the sample in. I measured the temperature of the boiling water, and it was at 99 degrees Celsius did that a couple of minutes ago. So as I transfer the metal, I'm also going to assume that it's going to be 99 degrees Celsius. And this one here pretty much reads 4 degrees Celsius. I don't I don't know if this can be actually read on the on the camera. But so anyway, so I got 4 degrees Celsius cold water and 100 degrees, I'm sorry, 99 degrees Celsius piece of brass. Put it in there, cover it for a little while. Do the same thing with the lead. Yeah, pretty much 4 degrees. So put the 99 degree lead in there. And then I'm going to give it about a minute or and a half in order to have the heat flow from the hot metal into the cold water and then get a mixing temperature. I also before measured the mass of both of these samples and the brass was 271 grams and the lead was 361 grams. And I'm going to see what happens here. This I think that was already kind of like a minute, minute and a half. Okay, I'm just going to put this one in here. And I'm just going to monitor it. And yeah, if you want to come around. I'm not going to record this temperature. I'm just going to monitor it to see if it tops out at some point. Of course, I'd start, I go with the cold water, so at some point it's going to top out. Um, this one is relatively close to room temperature, actually. If I go from the other side that I would have a cold metal with boiling water, then it would actually bottom out. I would have to wait for that. Um, I don't think it changes much anymore, so I want to say I pretty much have 19 degrees on this one. This one would be the brass, and I have... 13 degrees for the lead. And that's all the data I need, and then I would have to do the calculations on those. Okay, thank you. This is the analysis for the data that I measured for the specific heat capacities experiment. And I used these specimens, lead and brass. And they came, these were hot specimens and cold water. I only chose to do one of these here. Notice that further down you have the same one, hot specimen, cold water. But then, of course, there's the other one, the specimen, the metal in the, in the freezer, and then pour, um, drop it into hot water. Either way, the analysis is exactly the same, so I get away with just showing you one particular example. Okay, for the lead, I measured a mixing temperature of 13 degrees Celsius, and it was an initial temperature of 99 degrees Celsius, so Tf minus T final is negative 86 Celsius degrees. I'm going to copy this negative sign here, just makes it look a little better. The mass I had mentioned in the video was 361 grams, I had determined that at another time. And then the specific heat capacity of lead I looked at as 128 
joules per kilogram and Celsius degrees. And then I have to multiply this one times that times that according to the equation for the heat flow. Paying attention that I need to convert the 128 joules per kilogram and Celsius degrees to joules, grams and Celsius degrees, which means when I type it in on my calculator it's 0.128. So that's what I'm going to do, 0.128 times a mass of 361 times a temperature change of negative 86 Celsius degrees, and I come up with 3,973 joules, and then I look at significant figures, they need to be two, so these are my significant figures, but the seven of course rounds up to 4,000. And here, this one is actually two significant figures. These two are significant. The other two zeros here are placeholders. I know it doesn't quite look that way, that both of these are significant, but we know that from the context from that we measured here two significant figures, making this here a 4,000. Not around it for well, around at 4,000, but it's not 3,900 or 4,100, but it really is 4,000. Okay, water. Mixing temperature, of course, 13 degrees. It was cold water. There was ice in the beaker that I had used to make the water as cold as possible, and that was 4 degrees. 13 minus 4 is 9 degrees. That's a positive number. That's the temperature increase for the water. And then the mass for the water, I said 100 milliliters, and that would make 100 grams because of the density of water to be 1 gram per milliliter and then the specific heat capacity of 4186 joules per kilograms and Celsius degrees so again on the calculator I would type 4.186 times 100 times 9 and I come up with 3767 that should be rounded to 4000 because of the one significant figure right here but I'm gonna make an exception here and I'm just gonna round it to two significant figures as well, so we can see a little bit of a difference there. So that should be 3,800 rounded. And oops, I forgot one little thing here. The heat flow came out to be negative. Actually, I have that on my calculator. It said negative 3,973 earlier. And then I'm going to do negative 4,000. Um, I take the absolute value of that, so 4,000 minus 3800 is 200 for some reason there was that little thing in front so so the difference of the absolute values of these two is 200 and I divide that by again the absolute value of 4000 and I come up with 0.05 and that's an error of 5% so and I think you can see that, that the error between these two is 5% and again, this is the heat that flows into the water, this is the heat that flows out of the lead. These two numbers should be the same, but because of experimental and measurement errors, they are at least close, moving 5%. Okay, for the brass, I measured a mixing temperature of 19 degrees Celsius. The initial temperature for the brass was 99. 19 minus 99 is negative 80. There it is, negative 80. That's actually two significant figures. Look at these two here. Two. It's not 79, it's not 81, it's 80. And the mass, I said that in the video as well, 271 grams. I measured it prior to recording. And then the specific heat capacity, I looked that up for brass, is 380. And when I do the calculations, I plug in 0.38 joules per grams and Celsius degrees times 271 grams times negative 80 Celsius degrees and I come up with negative 8238 which I should round to 8200 negative 8200 joules that flows of heat that flow out of the brass. For the water, the mixing temperature of course is the same, 99 degrees Celsius. It was really cold water at 4 degrees Celsius, 19 minus 4 is 15. And the mass was 100 milliliters, which means it's 100 grams. 
I mentioned this in the video the reason why I took 100 grams for the water rather than the suggested 50 is because I had relatively large specimen and I and and I meant to cover them completely in water. Okay, 4,186 is joules per kilogram cells degree is the specific heat capacity. So again, I'm going to type in 4.186 to have it converted to per grams times 100 grams times 15 Celsius degrees, and I come up with 6279, respectively 6,300 joules flow into the water, and we can see this is these two numbers should be the same, but of course, be, but due to experimental and measurement errors, yeah, they're a little bit further off than the other one. So I'm going to do 8200 minus 6300. Again, the error shows the absolute values of these. So 8200 minus 6300 is 1900. And then I divide that by 8200. And I come up with 0.23, which means I have an error of 23%. And that's how you analyze the data. And then a reminder in your conclusion, you have to compare the heat flows, what kind of error you have, and you have to try to explain why possibly do we get relatively large errors at times for the heat flows and you would have to look at the way the experiment is conducted. I gave you a couple of hints in a post lab question and yep, that's how you're going to write your conclusion.